Today's video is brought to you by StoryboardThat.com. Please visit TeacherCast.net slash StoryboardThat for a limited time offer. Well, let's bring on Diana. Uh, Diana, talk to us a little bit about Wii Video. We were saying this a little bit before the audio went on, and there is a great way for students right now to create video online, and that is Wii Video. Uh, tell us a little bit about what we can have here. Sure. Well, Wii Video is a video editor, as I said before, um, and it's all browser based. So you basically log into a website, WeVideo.com, and you will find our full platform there, which includes different things, starting from three different editing modes, which allows you to adapt your environment to the level of experience that you have and still be able to create great videos. Um, and then we have different tools like uh, uh, simple things like audio related or text graphics, all the way to things like green screen and slow-mo and fast-mo. Now, we are talking about Google Apps. So one of the things that we have, our full platform is on WeVideo.com, and that's where our core product is. But we do have something that we like to call companion apps, one of which is uh, a, a WeVideo app for Google Drive, as well as apps for mobile devices and even Chromebooks. But again, the core product is a browser-based app. So you can find WeVideo.com on your browser, on WeVideo.com, or by adding this uh, Google add-on. Uh, for your Google Drive. And I'll, I'll walk you guys through how, how you do that, but that's basically the core of our product. Could you take us through a little demonstration of how you can go from your Google Drive into, say, adding Wii Video into it? Definitely. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and let's see if this works. Uh, tell me when you guys can see it. Sure. And of course, if you're out there watching live on TeacherCast.tv and you have some questions, please leave it in the chat box. Uh, Sam and I are going to be uh, uh, checking that out all during the show here. All right, so we have a Wii Video Companion Apps. Go ahead, tell us a little bit about this, Diana. Awesome. Well, for starters, if you want to uh, right now go ahead and see uh, the apps that I'm talking about, you could go to the Chrome Web Store and you will just search for Wii Video, just one word. And you will find at least two of our or two of our apps there. One is Wii Video for Google Drive, which is the one that we're talking about the most today. But we, you will find another one that is called Wii Video Next. Wii Video Next is a companion app as well, and it is basically one of those Chrome package applications that open up straight from the Chromebook as if it were a desktop application. And in there, you will find uh, our editor too in a simple form, which is the first storyboard mode, which is the easiest one. And you can log in with your same credentials as you would uh, with uh, your Google your Google email. Now, if you do uh, want to open it up on Google Drive, and again, talking about being in that environment that you already work on, then you will go ahead and install the Wii Video for Google Drive app. And then I'm going to go ahead and move here. So you see I'm on the Chrome Web Store. You will find it here. You see both apps. And once you install it, on your Google Drive, what happens is that there's a little folder created that is called Wii Video. But also, when you just click Create here, as you would start any other document or presentation that you have here in Google, you could just click on Wii Video, and you would open it up. Um, right now, I'm just going to simulate this. But you would open it up, and you will find basically our editor launch there. So once the editor launches, then you'll be able to see exactly what you would see. Basically, this is the, the editor right now. Exactly what you would see if you just would log into WeVideo.com. And I want to point out something very, very quickly before uh, I go into the full demo. I want to show the difference between the, the view of when you log into Wii Video for Google Drive. Uh, there's a simple uh, thing that we call the hub, where you're able to create new projects and invite people to your projects or even organize your projects. And it's just a very simple difference between WeVideo.com that you see here on the right and Wii Video for Google Drive. The concepts are the same, projects and invitations are still the same, but the view is just a little bit easier. And of course, the reason why we did this is one is just a, an add-on. And the second is that we're seeing a lot of teachers use this as a very simple and clean way for their students to just join WeVideo straight to the editor and not worry about um, other things in the UI environment where maybe they're confused and they could go and distract themselves. It's just straight on, create a project, and start the editor.
Are you guys there? <laughs> Absolutely. So awesome. when, when you're looking at this as a video editor, is this something that is um, only desktop compatible or would this be something that a student can try on a tablet device? Uh, yes. So we do have other companion apps, which are our Android apps uh, that you can download either on an Android phone or on an Android tablet. And they can definitely open up WeVideo there with their same credentials, which basically will be the, the Google credentials. Now, uh, I've spoken a lot about this editing modes. And um, if, you, if you want, I could go uh, walk you guys through what that is. But the reason why I want to bring it up is because uh, on the tablet right now, you can only use the first editing mode, which is the simple storyboard mode. And the reason being is because it's much faster and easier to just move around the, the sequence, which is what you see right now here the sequence of the different clips that you want to add to your story and edit it out. You do have some simple features that you can uh, do your video on the tablet, and then you can decide to either publish the video straight from the tablet or actually sync your video to your WeVideo account so that you can open it up either on WeVideo.com or WeVideo for Google Drive and continue editing it there. Here then, if you sync it to your other WeVideo account, uh, you could just switch to a different mode, which would be made to be a timeline mode. I'm just going to go ahead and do this very quickly. And then you'll see that same story that you started maybe on the, on the mobile device or on the tablet. And now you can do more things to it, like add different elements to the different layers or add music and voiceovers or start being more ambitious and even constructing something even longer that you can take your time and do in a, in a bigger device, which would be a computer or a Chromebook. The neat thing, you know, I, and, you know, I think it was last year, maybe two years ago, we did a show on TeacherCast with Wii Video, And I got to tell you, the only the, the one thing that always gets me about you guys is that it's very clean, very easy to use. And, you know, one of the questions that comes up about stuff like this is, can it be done with an elementary school background? And it's very, very simple for students of almost any age to pick up and be able to use. Oh, definitely. And. I mean, we've seen, and I'm going to just um, go ahead and keep moving here while I talk, but just to show you how easy it is to just drag and drop things. But in terms of examples, I mean, we've seen kids in elementary school use it to either, they maybe stay on the storyboard mode and they're very simple and maybe just create um, a little story by recording themselves with a webcam uh, and just talking straight. I mean, they just record one video, one complete clip. They record themselves talking about... Uh, I don't know, maybe like a show and tell. And then maybe they go here and add one of our themes, which themes is basically um, a pre-made uh, professional template that includes a, a title card, music, and a little bit of color grading. And that goes with different stories, right? So basically, just by applying this theme, they have a title card, some music uh, to that video that they recorded, which is just one. But it's still video editing because they're spicing it up. They're making it much, much professional looking. Uh, and then they're publishing right away in, in a few minutes. Uh, now, we've also seen others that they just say, you know what, skip the storyboard mode. This is, this is way too easy. Just go to the timeline and start doing something more ambitious. And even elementary kids, they just, do, they just thrive with things like this. And they're the ones that are teaching the teacher, actually. Could you talk to us a little bit about uploading video? We had some questions here about publishing. And I, I want you to definitely get into some of the publishing um, avenues, but when you're uploading video, is that something that you can upload from an iPhone, iPad, Android, whatever, or do you have to sync that into your computer and then upload it? So you have a couple of ways. If you're working on the Google Drive or on the web app, you just click on upload and you could either browse your computer or you can connect to other places. And especially right now, Google Drive, if you connect to your Google Drive account, you'll be able to see the clips that you have on your Google Drive and just pull from them, select them, and then send them to your WeVideo account so that you're, you're able to see them right here on your media. Now, if you record it on a phone or uh, either Android or iOS, you can uh, download our app. And again, what I mentioned, you just uh, select the clips that you want to use. And either you can start doing the sequence, the, the beginning of the story, or you could just pick the clips and sync it to your WeVideo account. And then after a little bit, you will see them right here, and then you can use them as you would any other clip. So there's two different ways to do that. I have a question here in the chat. And by the way, guys, if, you, if you're not watching, the TeacherCast.TV chat is really, really uh, booming here. I want to say a big hello to Craig and Peggy and Brian and Chris. Somebody here is saying, how do you use this? What is the practical way of using this? How do you use this in a lecture or a demonstration based? I remember, and, and 
again, I'm I'm not too up with the differences between Wii Video, Google Add-ons, and Wii Video, the website. But mm -hmm. I remember you were telling me about a classroom setup where the teacher can have all the video on a top level and the students can edit with that video. Is that, am I thinking of this the right way? Do you, is that? Definitely. Yeah. So um, right now, if you go to wevideo.com slash education, you will see our offering for education. And it's particularly a class pack where first off you're in an environment that we call a walled garden where only the people that are in that walled garden are able to see each other to both invite uh, people to a project. So right now, for example, I'm going to be switching to my project view uh, and I could just click here and invite people from my wall garden only to join my project. And by inviting them, I can, uh, they're able to see not only the media that I'm using to create the video, but they're also able to see this list view, which is basically the different versions of videos that have been created about this particular project, which is Japan, Japanese culture. So this is a way, for example, we've seen people, uh, teachers create a template where they load maybe five clips to the timeline and then they just ask uh, all the students to open up this edit. And if I click edit, I'm just gonna go ahead and actually see the pieces of the story here. And by the kids opening up that edit, they can uh, maybe add a voiceover to it and completely change that story, uh, add more elements to that story, uh, erase elements from that story, highlight certain things. Uh, that's one way of collaborating. The second is actually by sharing media. So we have on that same uh, education uh, account a shared media folder, and I'll show you how that looks when I go into the, the hub, which is the management console for Wii Video. But you have basically here a shared folder, and this is a place where people put, uh, let's say that you bought a lot of stock uh, clip art for your school or music for your school. Uh, let's say that you all went to a field trip and the teacher wants to include all this media here that everybody would see, everybody in that walled garden, regardless of the project that they're working on. So that is one of the ways that, that you can collaborate as well. Now, one big important thing, and since I'm mentioning this walled garden, I wanted to tell you guys is um, this, the reason why we did this is because we want kids to be in a safe environment where they can create any kind of project. We've been seeing uh, kids actually pour their hearts out and create things like uh, a PSA about bullying. And by being in the safe environment, they're only able to collaborate or communicate with maybe just the teacher or with a couple of students or even work by themselves in the web, being safe in an environment that that video is not going to go anywhere else uh, when they publish it. There's not going to go outside of, of the walls that the student, uh, I'm sorry, that the teacher um, decides. And we can talk a little bit more about that later. There's a question here in the chat box here. It says, does this work simil similarly to Google Docs with the history restore feature? And uh, if you are collaborating, do, do students have an opportunity to change somebody else's work? Uh, yes, and um, I'm not completely sure about the first question, uh, and let me just explain how it works when uh, kids uh, use each other's uh, edits. So I'm going to go back again here to projects, and what happens is that they don't simultaneously edit. It's not like a Google Doc where you see all the mouse move at the same time, uh, because it will be very disruptive, and you would you will be basically, if, I, if you want to put a song and that other person wants to put a song at the same time, it just wouldn't work. But the way that we do it is basically a revision, a revision or a history um, versions of the video. So when you're working on a collaborative project like, like I have here, uh, the one that is on top is basically the newest uh, video. And each of the students can see each other's work. Like if you and I, Jeff, will be working on this one, uh, you created this one and I created this one, I could go in here and open yours up. But if, as soon as I make any change, it's gonna get saved with my name. That way I don't disrupt what you just created. And if we later on wanna go back to your version because it was better, then we could just open that one up and publish that one up. Pretty neat there. There's a lot of great stuff happening over at Wii Video. Could you talk a little bit about the exporting settings? Definitely. So I'm gonna switch back here and I'm gonna to go to publish. And uh, now, what you do, what, what happens here is that when you publish, you usually publish to Wii Video uh, all the time because uh, we're allowing you to work on a browser-based editor and as you could see, everything that I was moving and changing was pretty fast. But when you publish your video, it's really when we uh, render that video out and create that final product. So all the videos go to WeVideo.com. 
And you can also select Google Drive or any other destination. And with one click, when you click publish, it gets sent to your Google Drive as well. So uh, after that, you can also choose uh, the quality of your export. You can decide to go 480 or 720p. Um, and then I'm also going to touch base on one other thing. Um, I have been talking a lot about this walled garden and permissions. But depending on what the parameters that um, an administrator or basically the tech coordinator that sets up WeVideo for the, for the uh, students decides, for example, those import destinations that I was talking to you guys about where you can pull the media from, or particularly export destinations where you want students to be able to export their videos to, um, you can decide, that the, the tech coordinator can decide. So for example, things like Google Drive and WeVideo.com are great for them to just export their video to. But places like Vimeo or YouTube or Dropbox that are uh, maybe way too open for a school environment, you can decide to block those. And this is one of the greatest benefits of our WeVideo education account. It seems like there's just a lot of neat things going on over here. And I love the fact that as an administrator, you do have the ability to turn on and turn off those settings. Um, there is one last question here. I think we might have hit it, but I want to make sure that we get to it. Could you explain the differences one more time between the free version and what the premium features would be? Yeah, so one of the things, um, we, we video for free is open up for everybody, not just education. So if you go there, you will be able to not only use WeVideo on your phone and WeVideo on Google Drive, uh, you have just limitations on the export time, which is how many minutes you have to export your videos. Uh, you do have a watermark and you have uh, a certain allotment for storage. If you use a WeVideo for Education package, it is a seat-based package where uh, somebody purchases the seats for everybody. It starts, I believe, around 249 per year for 50 users. And then uh, the students basically log in with their free accounts, and then you have that collaboration. You're able to see those premium features like slow-mo, green screen. Uh, you're able to see all of this, which is the admin tab, where you're able to see not only uh, set permissions, but also see reporting on what the students are doing. Uh, you're able to set user roles which is great because that way you can give certain people more administrative tools and um, students can have a little bit more of a restriction. Uh, and you can go in here and actually review what they're doing, review their videos, review how much time they're spending on the editor and other things that we've been seeing that teachers really, really need for them to, to be in an environment and in a one-stop place to create and safely do their videos for their projects in school. Just looking here, Sam, there's so much stuff that can be used in all grade levels and really all subjects here. Um, it really does seem like it's one of those great add-on tools that any teacher can use. Oh, definitely. And the ability of the teacher to push video sources out to the kids is really phenomenal scaffolding because so often you're burning time on either having kids find video, import video, shoot video, whatever. But if you had a common piece of set, of, uh, set of video that you wanted the kids to all use to create a presentation, this is a great way to get it all to them and some really straightforward tools to use to put that together.